يا طالب العلم قم لا تنم فإن الزمان انقضى وانصرم فكن ما حييت ضنينا به فظنك بالوقت عين الكرم الثامن والستون حديث نمبا 68 عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم صو صفوفكم سو صفوفكم فإن تسوية الصفوف من تمام الصلاة أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه he narrates uh, from the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that he says سو صفوفكم straighten your rows straighten the lines or straighten your rows <coughs> فإن تسوية الصفوف من تمام الصلاة for indeed straightening the rows uh, is from the completion of the salah, from the completion of the prayer. So in this hadith, uh, the Prophet wasallam he is guiding his ummah, he is commanding his ummah, al-amr, yani sawusfufakum, so this is amr. So the Prophet wasallam is commanding his ummah to straighten the rows when they are standing behind the imam. <coughs> when they are standing behind the Imam. Um, so we learn from this hadith that straightening the rows is either wajib or mustahab. Is either wajib or mustahab. It is either obligatory or it is highly recommended. How so? Because the Prophet ﷺ gives us an amr and a command. And as you've all learned previously in from the principles of usul al-fiqh, is that al-amru yaqtadi al-wujub, is that command uh, or imperatives in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, they necessitate an obligation unless, so they necessi- necessitate an obligation unless there is a qareena tasrifu al-hala min al-wujub ila al-istihbab, unless there is a qareena or there is a controller or something else that removes uh, the hukum, the ruling from being obligatory to being mustahab. So in this hadith, we do not know yet. The hadith gives us an amr. So we have to say that it is wajib for us to straighten the rows. So what are the... Um, we also learn from this hadith that straightening the rows uh, completes your prayer. So if, a, if, for example, there is a saf and a row that is mi'waj, that is crooked, There is someone standing ahead of the row or standing behind the row or it's not straight (coughs) then this means that their salah is not complete it means so that means it's naqis it's deficient and if it's if it's deficient it means that the ajr and the reward of the salah is going to be deficient so the reward of that salah is going to be deficient so in order for that whole row the whole saf for their salah to be completely uh, yeah, and they, they, in order for them to ab- obtain the complete ajr and reward, <coughs> they need to straighten the rows. So this is what we also can derive from this hadith. Um, so from the ahkam of this hadith, from the rulings of this hadith, as mentioned, is that firstly, it is makruh, disliked, or haram, impermissible, to uh, not straighten the rows. Okay. Also, the ulama, rahimahumullah ta'ala, they say that the hikmah and the wisdom behind the taswir to sufuf or straightening the rows is because uh, the angels and the malaika, they straighten their rows when they are praying. Uh, Jabir in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, he says, خَرَجَ عَلَيْنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day he came out فقال, and he said ala tasuffuna kama tasuffu al-malaika tu inda rabbiha <coughs> indeed why do you not straighten your rows like the angels straighten their rows when they are praying uh, when they are with their lord qulna we said ya rasul allah kayfa tasuffu al-malaika tu inda rabbiha o messenger of allah how do the angels straighten their rows qal the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said uh, so they complete the rows and they stand in a straight line. So 
if for example you come to the masjid and you see that the first row or the or, or, or the, there is a row and there is a space available in that row then you should go and fill that space and you shouldn't stand <coughs> uh, behind them so you shouldn't stand behind them but rather you should go and fill that space because this is what the malaika <coughs> this is what the angels do طيب. Hadith number 69 عن النعمان بن بشير رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يقول لا تسون صفوفكم أو لا يخالفن الله بين وجوهكم uh, النعمان بن بشير رضي الله تعالى عنه uh, he says that he heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم say لا تسون صفوفكم you will uh, you will by Allah you will straighten your rows or Allah will create discord and fitna and animosity in your hearts between you okay between you this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim in the version of Muslim uh, Jab and uh, Nu'man ibn Bashir he says كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يسوي صفوفنا حتى كأنما يسوي بها القداح He says that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم would straighten our rows The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He would straighten our rows حتى كأنما يسوي بها القداح uh, He would straighten the rows um, as if straightening an arrow so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would straighten our rows and he would take great care before he entered the Salah to, straight, to make sure that our rows, our lines were straight. Similar to how someone straightens an arrow. حَتَّى رَأَى أَنْ قَدْ عَقَلْنَا عَنْهُ Until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he learnt uh, and, he, and the Prophet, until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sure that we had learnt this ruling, that we had learnt this ruling and we understood its significance. ثُمَّ خَرَجَ يَوْمًا Until one day, he came out, فَقَام and he stood up. حَتَّى كَادَ أَنْ يكبر. So until one day, he stood up, um, until he was about to say Allahu Akbar. So the Prophet was standing in front of the Sahaba and he was about to say Allahu Akbar. فَرَأَى رَجُلًا Badian Sadrahu. So Faraa Rajulan Badian Sadruhu until he saw as he was about to say Allah Akbar and he saw a man whose chest was bulging out of the line. So his chest, just his chest was basically bulging out, and he could see his chest wasn't in line with the rest of, of the Sahaba who were in that row. Um Faqal and then he said, Ibad Allah. The O servants of Allah, let us sufufakum by Allah, you will straighten your rows. Aw la yukhalifan Allahu bayna wujuhikum. Or uh, you will straighten your rows. Or Allah will create enmity, animosity, discord, fitna between you. So what we learn from this hadith is wadih and clear, straight from the hikam, from the wisdom and the ilal of straightening the rows is that uh, straightening the rows causes the believers to love one another this is wadih and clear from the hadith so straightening the rows causes the muslimin to have love for each other because it is from because يعني, الأبدان, because when the when the bodies are in unison then the hearts are also in unison. When the bodies are united, then the hearts are united. This is this is clear. This is basic one-on-one psychology. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying that if we do not take great care in straightening our rows, then what will happen is that um, Allah Azza wa Jal will cause us to hate one another slowly. You know, this is what the hadith is telling us. Jameel. Um, so this hadith فيه وعيد شديد لمن لا يقيم لمن لا يقيم لمن لا يقيمون صفوفهم في الصلاة. So this hadith there's a clear warning for those who do not uh, take care in straightening their rows in the salah. Um, so if someone, for example, is ahead of the saf 
or behind the saf, uh, you know, some people unfortunately when they enter the row, they enter lazily in the row. And because of one person, sometimes the row cannot be complete because, some, because this person refuses to go near the, sec- the next person or refuses to just even pay attention to where their feet are. They're either playing with their phone or some people even trick, take offense at being told to straighten the row. Yani people unfortunately take even, they, they become offended. <laughs> yani if you tell them, Ya uh, stand please in line, or you try and nudge them slowly, gently, or you pull them gently, you know, it's, they become very, uh, of, you know, offended. And that's not really what should happen. Every Muslim is responsible um, to straighten that row. Every person in that row, in that saf, is responsible for straightening that row. This may come across as sometimes we enter the salah in a hurried state. Sometimes you come quickly, you enter the salah in a hurried state or you're thinking about something else. But when you stand in, in that saf, in that line, then look at your feet firstly. Look where your feet are. You know, one foot, if one foot is facing the west and the other foot is facing the east, or some people even find it difficult to make sure that their feet are in line uh, to their, own, their own feet They find it difficult that their own feet are in line So even their own feet are not straight The right foot is ahead of the left foot So what, does that, what that causes is that the saf will, not, it will never be straight Because the person to his right Is going to stand next to his right foot And the person to his left Is going to stand next to his left foot And his right foot and left foot are not in line So what, does that, what that causes is that the saf is basically not straight and then uh, obviously that means that that salah is not complete as mentioned in the previous hadith of Anas uh, ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu Jameel so there are certain ahkam and rulings now we need to discuss first mas'ala is ma hukmu taswiyat as-sufuf what is the ruling on straightening the rows when we say hukum first thing you should come to your mind is it is either wajib mustahab Makruh, Mubah, Haram Al-Ahkam al al khamsa The five rulings that The five rulings uh, Of uh, basically that are based upon uh, The resp- uh, burden And based upon responsibility Okay So what is the hukum and the ruling on Taswiyat al-Sufuf um, Firstly um, There are two opinions The first opinion is that uh, uh, straightening the rows is wajib The second opinion is that it is mustahab However uh, Based upon the evidences The correct opinion and the stronger opinion Is that stra- straightening the rows Is wajib, is obligatory Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, He has a chapter in his sahih Where he says Babu ithmu man lam yutimma sufuf The ithm and the sin Of the person who does not uh, Who does not Straighten the rows, and Allah alam, this sin is for the for that particular person, not for everyone in the row. ولا تزر وزرة وزرة أخرى. So every, that particular person who has caused this row to become crooked, or those people, then the ethim and the sin is going to be upon them. Um, نعم. Um, this is mentioned by uh, Ibn Hajar as well in Fathu Al Bari. Um, as for the person who prays, uh, yeah, and this particular person who has incurred this sin, then their salah is sahiha. Their salah is not batil. The salah is accepted. As long as they come with the rest of the arkan of the salah and the wajibat and the shurut of the salah, then their salah is wajibah. So this is the first hukum. The first mas'ala, sorry. The second mas'ala is, مَا هُوَ الَّذِي يُشْتَرَطُ فِي صِحَّةِ اِقْتِدَاءِ الْمَأْمُومِ بِالْإِمَامِ Jameel So the person behind the imam in the row Obviously this person is obligated to follow the imam إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ الْإِمَامُ لِيُؤْتَمَّ بِهِ فَلَا تَخْتَلِفُ عَلَيَّ As we we'll learn inshallah in next week's ahadith So this person has to, has to follow the imam Jameel So what is considered uh, following the imam? For the ma'moom. So we have the imam, we have the ma'moom. Imam, you all know who that person is. Ma'moom, anyone standing behind the imam and is being led by the imam is called a ma'moom in the Arabic language. Okay? So 
um, what is considered for the ma'moom when is a ma'moom rather let me rephrase the question when is a ma'moom considered to be following the imam okay al-imam al nawawi he answers this question for us he says that the ma'moom has to be aware and can hear obviously intiqalatul imam the movement and the words of the imam when the imam says allahu akbar then that ma'moom has to be able to hear the imam if they're able to hear the imam whether they are in the masjid or outside of the masjid then they are considered to be following the imam following the imam this is an imam al nawawi who said this rahimahullah ta'ala in his day and time there were no such thing as radios or televisions right so according to the, 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 this statement of Al Imam Al Nawawi, then that means that if a person puts on the Makkah TV at home in Manchester and can see Al Imam Al Sudais and Imam Al Shuraim saying Allahu Akbar, they're following the Imam, right? So according to this definition, then this person can consider themselves that they are following the Imam of Masjid Al Haram, which means that they can pray behind him, right? Wrong. No. Okay? Wrong. This definition of Al Imam al Nawawi is based upon physical contact. What that means is that this person has to be someone who is physically present with the Imam, physically present, present or adjacent to the Imam, or in that particular, either in the masjid or outside the masjid, if the rows of the masjid are full and the rows are connecting to out, until they are outside the masjid, then this person. As long as they are aware of the Imam, they can hear him, then they can be considered to be in that particular jama'ah. But let's say, for example, now, if uh, Eid prayer in Masjid Salam, people, the, the Masjid is full until people are praying outside in the street. So that means that the person outside in the street, if they cannot hear the Imam, if they can't hear the Allahu Akbar of the Imam, or some of the, the Qira'ah of the Imam, even faintly, then that person is not considered to be in that particular jama'ah, okay, in the, in the street. Unless someone in the masjid, uh, and someone in the masjid basically, they volunteer to stand somewhere, or people in the masjid stand and they repeat the takbir of the imam. If that happens, then this is fine. But if they cannot hear the imam, that means they can, they're not aware of the imam and they're not part of that particular uh, jama'ah. Naam. Uh, the next mas'ala is هل يصح اقتداء المأموم بالإمام إذا كان في المسجد وتباعدة الصفوف So is it correct for the ma'moom, the one praying behind the imam to follow the imam if they are both in the masjid but, uh, the, the, but the rose, but this person is praying uh, yeah, at, the, at the back of the masjid and the, this person hasn't basically connected the rows. So as an example, let's say Zayd and Amr, they come to Salat al-Dhuhr late. Zayd and Amr, they come to Salat al-Dhuhr late and there are only two rows in the masjid. Okay, And then what they do is they stand at the last row of the masjid because they want to leave quickly. This is not advisable to do, but they stand at the last row of the masjid. So they haven't connected the sufuf they haven't joined it between them between between them and the last row is 10 rows that are empty okay what is the ruling is the, is there salah when i say salah i mean is there salah with the imam because we're talking about the imam considered to be correct are they considered to be from in salatul jama'a uh, shaykh ruslan taymi he says man salla fi mu'akhkhar al masjid ma'a khulu ma yali Al-Imam kana salatuhu makruha. Whoever prays at the back of the masjid while there is space between him and the Imam, then their salah is makruha. The hukum of the salah is that it is disliked. This salah is makruha, it is disliked, however, it is considered to be uh, correct. Jameel, next mas'ala now. Um, uh, if a person, if a person, if a person prays at home following the salah of the imam in the masjid the imam is in the masjid this person is at home and between them and the imam is are barriers what is the hukum of this salah so مثلا, 
So, مثلا, uh, there are some houses and flats next to Mrs. Salam, right? So, if, for example, let's say there is a, the, the, you know, the, the, the person in, you know, uh, outside in, in his house, in Mes, you know, outside Mrs. Salam, in the street, they're in their house, they can hear the Allahu Akbar, the takbir of the ihram, uh, the imam. They can hear the imam, they're aware of the imam, they can actually even maybe spot the imam through their window. And in their living room, in the comfort of their living room, should they place their prayer mat and say, khalas, I can see the imam, I don't need to actually go to the masjid anymore, I'm going to pray from there. Okay? What is the hukum of this person, their salah? Another example is in Masjid al-Haram, in Mecca, for example, in hotels. Some people, for some strange reason, to this day, I don't really know why they do this, they end up paying thousands of pounds, going to Mecca, and then they end up praying in their hotel room. It's one of the mysteries of life. I've never, I haven't figured that out yet. I've asked a few, few of them, but their excuses really have, are very strange. Um, so this person who prays in their hotel room, they can see Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Obviously, they can hear the Imam. They can hear the Imam. MashaAllah, the Mukabbirat of Salt are very clear and audible. So this person now, there is a barrier between them and the Imam. Obviously, there's walls and there's buildings and, you know. So what do they do? Um, is their Salah, with the Salah that they're praying, is this Salah considered to be, are they considered to be following the Imam? Okay, this is the Mas'ala, right? Tasawarna al-Mas'ala. You've pictured the issue. Jameel. Before we get to the hukum of this issue, there is a ijma' and there is a khilaf. La budda an nuharrir mahal al niza'. This is called in fiqh tahrir mahal al niza', which basically means that we need to define the 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 we need to define the uh, the, the 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 conflict here. We need to define the khilaf and the difference of opinion here. We need to mention what exactly we're talking about. So firstly, there is the ijma'. The ijma' is, firstly, there is no khilaf between the people of knowledge in that the salah of the ma'moom um, who's praying behind the imam outside the masjid, if the rows are connected, is correct. Okay? So I repeat again. There is no khilaf here that if a ma'moom is praying outside the masjid, their salah is correct, provided that the rows are connected all the way to the imam. And they can obviously hear the imam. There's no khilaf. This is bil ijma. So we're not talking about this scenario here. What we're talking about is the previous scenario. Jameel. So there is a difference of opinion here. However, the correct opinion, the stronger opinion without any doubt, is that if a person prays, Shaykh al-Islam al actually he says that if a person prays in his house with the salah of the imam who's in the masjid and there is a ha'il, there is a, there is a barrier between them and the imam then their salah with the imam is not sahih, is incorrect. That salah is a salah to al-munfarid. That salah is not with the imam, that salah is going to be considered as someone praying on their own. But that person, because there's a barrier between them and the Imam, the rows are not connected, then that Salah is considered to be a Salah that is not correct with the Imam. Okay? This is the Madhab of Imam al-Shafi'i, and this is the Ikhtiyar of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Jameel? Because let's, what would be the alternative? Imagine this was allowed. Imagine this was allowed. يعني, you know? Then that would mean, for example, people can turn on their radio or TV and pray in, in Mecca every day while in the, in the comfort of their own home. Why go to the masjid anymore? They can just pray in, with the Imam al-Sudaisi in Mecca and khalas. That means there's no need to build any masjid anymore. There's no need to build any masjid. We just rely on Mecca and Medina now. Khalas. Everyone prays behind Mecca. Fajr pray, you pray behind Mecca. Dhuhr, Medina and vice versa. That would, well, this is what would, this call, if this was allowed, then the thamar, it would lead to that basically. So there's no doubt that this salah is not considered to be uh, with, the, with the imam. Jameel. The next hadith <coughs> is hadith of Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, Anna jaddatahu mulayka, his grandmother, um, 
Na. Na. So, anna jaddatahu, the actual, the riwayah actually states his grandmother. However, uh, it is highly, it is well known um, in other narrations that this is actually his mother. His mother, Mulaika. Um, Da'at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she uh, basically invited the Messenger of Allah, his mother, Anas ibn Malik, his mother, invited the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, to some food. So she invited him to eat some food in her house. Sana'atuhu lahu, food that she made herself. Fa'akala minhu. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he accepted the invitation and he ate from her food. Thumma qal, and then he said, Qumu fali usalli bikum. Stand up, let me. Uh, let me lead you in prayer. He wanted to show them how to pray. قال أنس أنس he says فقمت إلى حصير لنا قد سود من طول ما لبس. So Anas he said that I stood up to fetch and to get a prayer mat, a prayer mat that became dark and it became black because of longevity, because of the number of times people prayed on it. فنضحته بماء so I sprinkled it with water. فَقَامَ عَلَيْهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ So the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he stood on the, on the mat. وَصَفَفْتُ أَنَا وَالْيَتِيمُ وَرَاءَهُ And I and the orphan uh, stood behind the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَالْعَجُوزُ مِنْ وَرَائِنَا And the, my mother, she stood behind us. فَصَلَّى لَنَا So he led us in prayer. رَكْعَتَيْنَ Two units of prayer. ثُمَّ انصرف And then he left. And in the version of Imam Muslim, in Imam Muslim, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salla bihi wa bi ummihi, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salla bihi, he led him and his mother, faaqamani an yaminihi. So Anas says, so he, in the version of Muslim, there were three people Anas, his mother, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the version that we, we read, there were four people, right? So in Sahih Muslim, he says, that the Prophet Sallallahu he, he made me stand to his right وَأَقَامَ الْمَرْأَةَ خَلْفَنَا And she stood behind us. And she stood behind us. Jameel. So this hadith firstly um, tells us firstly that it is wajib and obligatory to straighten the rows. Okay. Um, also um, it tells us and it shows us the care and consideration that the Prophet ﷺ gave to straightening the rows. That the Prophet ﷺ, he made sure that everyone was standing in the correct place before the Salah actually even started. So this discipline is part of Islam. This discipline, making sure you're, you're where, you know, wherever you're standing is correct, it is part of Islam. Um, also, um, uh, Naam. Also, um, we learn from this hadith that um, Mulaika, uh, the Prophet وسلم, his karam and his uh, generosity, his kindness, his generosity towards everyone, towards the young and the old, towards men and women. And the Prophet وسلم, was not too proud to accept the invitation of anyone in the community. Unlike some people, for example, who have a high status in the community, they could be, you know, an imam or someone that people look up to. If someone, for example, that they consider to be lower than them, which is obviously wrong, but for example, some, someone who the people consider by the custom and the urf of the people consider to be someone who is younger than them, maybe an old lady, someone who doesn't have much influence <laughs> in the community. If they invite him, this high person of high status to some food, then it is from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to accept this invitation and, that, and for not, that person not to frown upon this and say, this is beneath me to go to this place. Who's going to attend? Wallahi, the people, and then they look around them and they see Mathal and Masakeen and they say, Wallahi, this, this is not my crowd, as they say. This is not my crowd and this is not a place that I should be, you know, I'm not, I should be surrounded by like-minded individuals. All this nonsense that we hear from the West, you know? Like, in Islam, Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, بِحَسْبِ امْرِئٍ مِّنَ الشَّرْءِ أَنْ يَحْقِرَ أَخَاهُ الْمُسْلِمِ It is enough evil for a person to belittle uh, and to look down upon his Muslim brother or sister. Um, نعم. So, firstly, there are certain ahkam here that we need to know. Firstly, um, 
the majority of the scholars are under the opinion that it is correct for a child, because Anas was a child, this Yatim was a child, for a child to be in a row. Okay, so this we t we learn there's some people who remove the children from the rows altogether and get them all stay away. This is not from the hikmah. This tells us that it is from the wisdom, from the it is legislated for children to be in the rows. Okay, if there are two children, for example, and you know they're going to be messing about in the row, then just divide them. You know, make get one of them to to to, to pray on you to your right and the other to pray to your left, and problem solved. Um, and Naam Also um, This child doesn't have to be a child That has reached the age of Taklif, the age of burden So this child doesn't have to be A child, for example That, is, that can differentiate Between right and wrong It can even be a child that is Less than 7 years old It could be a 5 year old, it could be a 4 year old And be short in, on condition that they can stand in the row that then you know they can actually stand in the row you know there has to be some leeway given also sometimes these children they may not <coughs> they may not stand in the row perfectly but to give them this tarbiyah and this nurturing and cultivation then this is uh, this is uh, you know overlooked we overlook this minor uh, you know discrepancy also um also, we learn from this hadith that the ma'moom, the person be praying behind the imam, has to obviously pray behind the imam and not in front of the imam. We also learn from this hadith that the woman, women stand behind men in the salah. So women, they, they stand behind the men in the prayer. This is from the legislations of al-Islam. Um, also, we learn from this hadith um, that it is it is okay and it is allowed for a person to lead other people in prayer in the nawafil in the nawafil salah in sunan prayers as long as this is not done consistently and continuously sometimes it is allowed also we learn from this hadith that it is permissible to lead someone in prayer in order to teach them in order to teach them so method on your children you want to teach them then it is from the sunnah to lead them in prayer and they observe your salah this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Um, naam. Jameel. Also, there are other ahkam here, um, which is, there are other rulings, which are firstly, um, what is the ruling of the ma'moom who prays ahead of the imam? So we have an imam and we have a ma'moom. What is the ruling of the, of a, if a person prays in front of the imam? What is the ruling on their salah? Um, firstly, it is, impermissible to pray ahead of the imam or in front of the imam and that salah in usual circumstances is considered to be batil and that salah is not accepted that person's salah is not accepted because they are praying ahead of the imam however it is accepted in certain rare occasions if there is an actual legitimate excuse such as zahma such as for example there is nowhere else to stand in prayer there is nowhere else to stand um, so especially, for example, in Medina, in Masjid al-Nabawi, for example, sometimes in Eid prayer, it becomes really, uh, you know, the Masjid becomes full and there is nowhere else to pray except ahead of the Imam. In this instance, this Salah is considered to be permissible. Um, and the, the, the proof of this is that it is well known that the wajibat of the Salah, tasqutu ma'al ajz, the wajibat of the Salawat, there are wajibat, every salah has certain wajibat and obligatory act, acts. These obli obligatory acts, it is bil ijma, it is known that the, they are uh, not required if there is a, uh, if there is, for example, a, a legitimate excuse or if there's an impediment. If there is an impediment, okay? Um, and here, from the wajibat of the, يعني, of praying behind the imam, is praying. Uh, of, of, from the wajibat of praying with the imam Is praying behind the imam So you have to pray behind the imam However, this wajib This thing that is wajib Is no longer wajib If there is a legitimate excuse And that excuse, for example, is If there is nowhere else to pray If there literally is nowhere else to pray Jameel The next mas'ala is um, If a woman We know that women have to pray behind men Right? So what, if, what happens if a woman 
um, uh, يعني, if a woman, for example, she prays behind some men um, and she's alone. So let's say, for example, there are five people, the imam, and then there are three people behind the imam, three men behind the imam, and then there's a woman. There's no one there with her. She's the only woman. So she can't obviously stand next to the men. She has to stand behind the men. So can she stand on her own in the, in the saf, in the row? Um, the answer is yes, she can. Um, the proof is this hadith here. This hadith tells us this. So she can stand, stand behind the row on her own. There's nowhere else for her to stand. And her salah is considered to be correct uh, and permissible. Um, the next mas'ala is, um, what if a woman, she stands in front of some men or she stands next to some men? So she doesn't know the hukum, the ruling. Okay, those five people, for example, the imam, then you've got three men. Okay, what if that fifth w woman, she stands next to the three men? They've all entered the salah. Khalas, they've said Allahu Akbar. And then the sister comes, stands next to him. What do they do? Yani, wh wh what's the hukum and the ruling of her salah? Okay, obviously they, they have nowhere else to go, so they finish their salah. But is her salah considered to be correct? The answer is that... Um, that her salah is correct, but it is considered to be makruh. It is considered to be disliked. Okay, this is the opinion of the Jumhuru Ahlil Ilm, the majority of the scholars. So her salah is correct, and it is also disliked. Do you understand? So al uh, yeah, and this is known in fiqh as infikakul jiha. Infikakul jiha. Infikakul jiha is if one. Uh, if, if one situation has two rulings, basically. Like, for example, if a person steals some land from someone and they go and rob some land by force from someone, okay? The salah that they pray on that land is haram. But the salah is still accepted. The salah is still accepted. So this is known in fiqh as infikaku al-jiha. And this is another uh, example of infikaku al-jiha. Jameel. The next mas'ala is, what is the ruling on a man Okay, uh, praying behind a row, praying behind uh, the, the row on his own, on his own. Okay, so uh, this is for a scenario is all the rows are full. You come late to the salah and there's no, you can't enter any of the rows. You can't uh, bypass all the rows to stand at the right of the imam because you're allowed to stand at the right of the imam. Okay, because that would create... Uh, some so you know you're, you're going to disturb people in their salah there's nowhere else for you to pray except on your own in that road there's no one else coming into that masjid as well so this mas'ala here what is the ruling Jamil two very uh, there are two major opinions here the first opinion is that this person's salah is correct if they pray like this this person's salah is correct okay so we're talking about someone who maybe has sorry Afwan, let's re re backtrack for a second. So we're talking about someone who has the ability to join a row. Okay? They have the ability to join a row, but they don't. Okay? So, for example, row number four, he could join row number four. But for some reason, they stand and they pray, they pray alone in their row. They don't want anyone near them. Social distancing, maybe. Yeah? So they stand and they say, Allahu Akbar. So this person has the ability to join a row. This particular mas'ala that I'm talking about here, there are two opinions. First opinion is the opinion of the majority of the scholars, the majority of the madahib, the ahnaf, the shafi'iyah and the malikiyah, okay? They say that this, their salah is considered to be correct. Their salah is considered to be correct. And the proof of this is in the next hadith actually that we're going to be uh, the learning here. They say is that the, uh, Ibn Abbas, he stood, he was praying with the Prophet Sallallahu once in Salatul Layl and Ibn Abbas, he stood to the left of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he took him by the head and he, 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 called, he basically caused him to go behind him and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood him to his right. So they said that Ibn Abbas, for those few seconds, he was praying on his own behind the Imam. So they used that, that as an evidence and they have other evidences as well. So this is the first opinion. The second opinion says that this person's salah is batil. 
is null. This is a person who is able to join the role. We're not talking about someone who has no other choice, able to join the role. So this person's salah is considered to be batil. Why? Because of the hadith in, al- in Musnad al-Imam Ahmed, from the hadith of Ali ibn Shayban, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ra'a rajul, and the Prophet, he saw a man, yusalli khalf al-saf. So the Prophet saw a man standing and praying uh, behind the row on his own. فَلَمَّنْ صَرَفْ After the prayer, the Prophet sallam, he said to him, إِسْتَقْبِلْ salatak, Repeat your salah. فَإِنَّهُ لَا صَلَاةَ لِمُنْفَرِدٍ خَلْفَ الصَّفْ For indeed, there is no salah for the one who prays on his own behind the row. This hadith is hadith Hassan and is Musnad, in Musnad al-Imam Ahmed. It's a clear hadith. لا صلاة There is no salah. For the person praying on his own behind the rope. Okay? The majority of the scholars, they had their own they, j- jawab for this hadith. They said this hadith, the Prophet when he says, La salah, there is no salah, he is negating. Remember we learned the different types of negations? Who can remember? He's negating, they said, uh, the kamal salah, the perfection of the salah. The perfection of the salah. But the, 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 sec, the proponents of the second opinion, which were the Hanabila and some other ulama, they said, no, the asal of negation firstly is nafi wujud, is the negation of the existence. And secondly, nafi siha, the, the, the negation of correctness and acceptability. This is the asal. If there is no qarina, there's nothing else telling us what type of negation it is. It is known Bil uh, ijma' that the first type of negation we resort to is mada the the negation of acceptance and correctness. So when the Prophet is saying la salah, he means there is no salah accepted for the person who prays on his own, his own, not her. We're not talking about women here. We're talking about men. The, for the person who prays on his own, or for the man who prays on his own behind the prayer, is that is that wadhi akhwan? Jamil. Um, the last hadith, inshallah, and then we'll, 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 come, we'll finish this chapter, um, is uh, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma qal. Uh, he said, may Allah be pleased with them both. He said, bittu in the khalati maymuna. So he said that I, um, I, I stayed in the home of my aunt, uh, my maternal aunt, Maymuna, فَقَامَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يُصَلِّي مِنَ الْلَيْلِ So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, يعني, he, this was his wife, so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he stood up to pray in the night, in the night, tahajjud. فَقُمْتُ عَنْ يَسَارِهِ So I stood up and I wanted to pray with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, so I stood to his left. I stood to his left. Okay? فَأَخَذَ بِرَأْسِي So he took me by the head, and he caused me, he, he took me by the head, فَأَقَامَنِي عَنْ يَمِينِهِ And he, he made me stand to my uh, right, to my right. Okay, to my right. So this hadith tells us, it's wadih and clear, that if two people are praying with each other, they have to have an imam. So the ma'moom, the one being led, if, you're, if it's one person, the one being led, the ma'moom, has to pray to the right of the imam. To the right of the Imam, not to the left of the Imam. And if someone else comes and there are two people now praying behind the Imam, then they pray together in their own row behind the Imam. If a woman comes, she prays behind those two people, those two men. If a child comes, the child prays next to those two men. This is how it's done. Okay. What is the ruling on praying to the left of the Imam? Let's say someone doesn't know the hukm, the ruling, and they pray to the left of the Imam. This salah is still considered, and it's makru, it's disliked, but it's considered to be sahih. This salah is considered to be correct. Okay? It's not makru if, for example, a person doesn't have anywhere else to pray except to the left of the Imam. Everywhere else is full, so they stand to the left of the Imam, and this is correct. Jameel. If we go back to the issue that I just we discussed regarding the man praying on his own behind the row, 
uh, we mentioned that we, we that if if there is a if there is a space in the road be, before him and he still prays on his own behind the imam, then that salah is batil. We mentioned this, right? But what if there is nowhere else to pray? What if, for example, there is nowhere else? He come, you come late to the to the masjid and to the salah. The imam is in the salah. The rows are all full. There's one row that the row that you're standing in on your own. This is the only row that's available. No one else is there with you as well. <clears throat> And what do you do? Some people they say, some actually there are some aqwal and opinions that they say that you should take someone from the row, pull them back and make them stand next to you. This you shouldn't do. Why? Firstly, it's going to cause, you're going to disturb someone else while they're praying and they, you're going to disturb their khushur. Secondly, you're, you're making them, uh, you're, you're taking them from a place of afdal, the, the, the better place to a place that is, is considered to be less in reward. Okay, and that's not fair. Okay. Number three also because uh, yeah, and it's basically those, those that's yakfi inshallah. So that's the first thing some people say you should do. The same, second people, second, some people say that that person should pray on their own. They shouldn't even pray with the imam because of this hadith, the hadith in Muslim, they should pray on their own and this is also incorrect. You're in the masjid, you can't have two, two prayers, fard prayers, Jama'ah prayers, not Jama'ah prayers, two fard prayers in the masjid while the Imam is giving the while the Imam is leading the prayer. Okay? Which means that you have no other option but to pray. So in this instance, you're allowed to pray on your own in the row because there is nowhere else to pray. There is nowhere else to uh, pray. And inshallah ta'ala naqfi inda hadal had wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Next week inshallah ta'ala we'll study Babul Imama, the chapter of Imama bi idhnillahi. وكن حلس درسك وافرح به تكن قائدا في غد للأمم وبادر شبابك من قبل أن يقطع عزمك سيف الهرم